The age-old question, hiking boots or trail runners? Now, while ultimately the decision is going to be as personal as your panties, nobody's gonna be able to tell you what's right for you, here are a few things to consider. Hi, my name is Nick Green, Hollywood on Trail. I'm not gonna bury the lead here. The single most important factor in footwear is comfort. Hiking is an inherently uncomfortable activity, so it behooves us to do whatever we can to limit that discomfort. Our shoes are our vehicle. You're wearing these things for 10 hours a day, every single day, doing 20 miles for five months. So make sure you do whatever you can to find what's right for you. Don't let anybody tell you what's right for you. You're going to figure that out by yourself. And once you get on trail and you figure out, you know what? Maybe these aren't for me. Just switch it up. It's as simple as that. Okay, here we go. Trail runners. I use La Sportiva Wildcats. My absolute favorite shoe of all time. I still wear them like every single day even out to dinner at fancy restaurants, and it drives my wife absolutely crazy, but I do it nevertheless. That's how much I love this shoe. Here are some of the pros to wearing trail runners. They are lightweight. You can wear these around every single day, and they're not gonna weigh down your leg or your foot like, say, a boot would. They're comfortable. I wear these still every single day in my civilian life. They also breathe really well. While you're on trail, your foot's gonna sweat a lot, especially in the hotter months, so having a shoe that uh, breathes well is quite important. Here's probably like the most important part of trail runners. They dry quickly. Now, a lot has been discussed for years about waterproof shoes versus non-waterproof shoes. The reality is the outside of a shoe, a boot, may be waterproof, but the inside certainly is not. And when you're on a trail as wet as the AT, your shoes are going to get wet. The inside's gonna be slogged with water. You're walking through sometimes three feet of water in puddles or lakes that seemingly make up the trail. Uh, your shoes are going to get wet from the inside out. In that case, I think it's more about your mentality than your footwear. Just pretend like you're a little kid playing in a puddle for like five months. <laughs> just, just lean into it, enjoy it, have fun. So, with that being said, you're gonna want a shoe that dries overnight. You're gonna want a shoe that dries while you walk in the sun if it finally ever decides to come out. And trail runners do just that. They're better for blisters for me. Now, I got blisters regardless when I was on the Appalachian Trail in like the first month or so, and then I never got them again. But I do know that when I go on shorter hikes and I wear my trail runners, I don't get blisters as opposed to when I wear my boots, I pretty much all the time get blisters, even on short hikes. So I think these are a little bit better for my taste in terms of blisters. Finally, they're typically cheaper. Uh, not all the time, of course, but typically. The cons, they're not waterproof. If you're walking through uh, like small puddles or something like that, the outside will get wet and it will seep in. That is one of the cons to a trail runner. But again, the pro, they dry quickly, which for me was more important. Now on my Appalachian Trail through hike, I did get shin splints the first month out there. And I attribute that to wearing them for way too long. I went out there with Brooks Cascadias that I had for like two years prior and I loved them. They were so comfortable, but they were already wearing down. I just thought, all right, I'll go out there and kind of just see how far I make it. I, I was being cheap and Shin splints suck. They were not fun and it was my fault completely. Don't do that. Just don't do that. La Sportiva Wildcats, my shoe of choice. My wife just likes to wear these Nike running shoes while she hikes a lot. So um, less, I think, uh, sturdy possibly than the trail runners. Just they're, they're more meant for running. But again, a good lightweight, comfortable alternative. Boots, everyone's grandfather's shoe of choice. 
Uh, tried and true. I use Vasks and they've lasted for years on some pretty rugged terrain. The pros are they're durable. They last a long time. You're going to get a lot of miles out of them. They tend to be stiffer up front in the toe area and I know when I'm hiking I tend to kick a lot of roots and rocks and my toenails seem to get all black and blue and sometimes fall off. But when you're through hiking a long trail, typically that happens anyway. 2,000 miles seems to just do that to you. But it's worth considering when your toes are a little bit more supported, you might be a little more comfortable. These are my wife's oboes, which she swears by. These things are kind of like tanks. So uh, you can run around, jump around, fall around, and uh, you're not really gonna get hurt on these things. For someone who needs good ankle support and otherwise, boots are obviously a wonderful option. They're certainly going to keep you warmer in the winter months, so if you're plodding through snow or something similar, uh, boots might be a, a nice option for you there. And finally, they're going to make your grandpa happy. So uh, <laughs> boots, the shoe choice of yesteryear. The cons are they don't dry as quickly. Uh, the Gore-Tex boots and other weatherproof boots once they get wet on the inside, it takes forever to dry. So you could be literally walking around for a week in wet boots that got wet like a week ago. Just consider that. They're not as comfortable day in and day out for me. They might very well be for you. Just personally, I know I get a little bit stiff inside of them. So after about three to four weeks on a trail, I tend to stiffen up a little bit and it's not so comfortable anymore. They're a bit heavier than trail runners, and though they're making them lighter and lighter every day, especially like these sort of crossover ones, and, and certainly my Vasks, they're, they're pretty light. They're not going to be as light as your trail runner or just hiking shoe even. Remember, you're gonna be hiking 20 miles or so every day in them, so you're gonna to wanna to be comfortable. That being said, the old leather boots that people swear by, those things just like butter mold to your feet apparently. <laughs> I don't know, I've never really had boots, leather boots long enough for them to do that. But apparently they just mold right to your feet and people absolutely swear by them. So those actually might be the most comfortable choice for you. No matter what you do, just consider at the end of the day, are they gonna be comfy? A good alternative to both of these could be hiking shoes. They're kind of like a crossover between the boots and the trail runners. They're typically low tops, so they're a little bit lighter probably than your boots but you might not get that ankle support if that's what you're looking for. They're kind of just like the hybrid. Brands like Merrill or Solomon make really good options that people swear by. I don't personally have any experience with that, so I'm just gonna keep moving on. Now, the most popular shoe on any trail, Crocs. Camp shoes, I love them. Crocs, I love them. They're comfy, they're perfect, end of story. Hi, buddy. In 2,193 miles of the Appalachian Trail, I went through about four and a half pairs of La Sportiva Wildcats. That breaks down to about 500 miles per shoe. Granted, I did get those shin splints at the beginning of the trail. That's the half of the four and a half pairs of shoes, but that was completely my fault. I pushed it way too hard. Again, don't do that. When your shoes are ready to be changed, before your shoes are ready to be changed, change them. Actually, my buddy Walden summoned a katahdin in like two or three weeks after I did, and we found out later on that he found my shoes in a hiker box somewhere in New Hampshire, thought, oh, these look pretty good, and finished it, finished the trail, finished the rest of the trail with my old La Sportiva. So they still had uh, some life in them yet. So in summation, I've seen people on trail in hiking boots, in trail runners, in running shoes, in hiking shoes, in Crocs. I've seen people in Chaco type sandals. I've seen people barefoot. I think someone even hiked the AT doing a handstand. I don't know if that's true. All right, that is it for now. Go get out on trail. Whatever shoes you bring with you, just get out there. And remember, if you can't carry it in your pack or in your soul, you don't need it.